Hi, it's Dale here. Welcome to a very quick video just to show you how to assemble your MT32 Pi Zero kit. Now, if you purchase this kit from myself, along with a 3D printed case, you'll find that the main PCB, which is what you can see here, is pre-installed inside the top half of the case for you, so you don't need to worry about doing that. If you are 3D printing your own case, there is a separate video which I'll link here, which you must go and watch first because it shows you how to safely install the PCB into the case like this. It's very important that you watch that video because there's some very delicate components on this board. It's easy to damage the board if you try and install it the wrong way. So please watch that video first, then you can come back here and complete the installation. So just a quick overview of the kit. You've got the main PCB, the two halves of the 3D printed case. This one's in Galaxy Black, but there's other colours available as well. You've got this uh, top face plate here. This bottom face plate here, which is made of aluminium and it has capped on tape strip on the back. You've got four brass standoffs, four short screws, four long screws, a thermal pad, a self-adhesive heatsink, and this holographic MT32 Pi logo sticker. Very nice. So before you can start, you need to get yourself a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. And I appreciate that is very hard to do at the moment because of chip shortages, but if you're patient, and you use stock notifications and you use websites like rpilocator.com, you will be able to get one eventually. Just be patient, don't pay scalper prices. Make sure that you, you, you're only paying retail price and be patient and you'll, you'll get one eventually. I managed to get two of these a couple of weeks ago just by uh, using stock notifications on various shops. So get one, get one of those. If you can get one with the GPIO header pre-soldered, even better. Um, if not, then please be careful soldering this and also make sure, whether it's pre-soldered or you're doing it yourself, make sure that you trim the back of the, um, the pins that are poking out the back of the PCB like I've done here. So these are trimmed nice and flush so that they're not poking out and that avoids shorts on the back of the, uh, on the bottom of the case as you'll see later. If you don't trim them, it's not the end of the world because there is some insulation tape on the back of this. Um, but if you do trim them, that'll guarantee that there's no way that they can come into contact with it. So get yourself one of these, get the, the GPIO header installed. Um, if, you need to, if you need to find a soldering guide, there are lots of these on YouTube, so I won't bother with that in this video. Um, and then you can come back and finish this. So uh, with that done, what you want to do is take your top half of the case with the PCB installed, and you want to First of all, peel off this uh, protective film on the OLED. I'm not going to do that because it's going to go to a customer, but take that off and then take your top face plate PCB and just put that on over the top of the buttons carefully there. And it should fit into the recess in the case, nice and flush like that. Then you want to take a, a long screw, put that into the one of the corners, get a brass standoff and just tighten it onto the end of the screw like that. And just repeat that for each corner. So there's four corners to do, obviously. And you don't want to get these too, too tight. There's no need to, you know, get a hex driver on these or anything just yet. You don't need to murder them on. Just get them finger tight to hold everything in place. And then you can come back and snug everything up with the screwdriver later on. Quite straightforward. Sometimes the holes, um, because of 3D printing, sometimes the holes might have some material inside. You may have to clear them out with a little uh, a pokey stick or a screwdriver or something, but I try and make sure that they're all clear for you before I ship them out. But there you go. So you've got the top half finished. The PCB is inside. You've got the four standoffs in place. Next, you want to take your Raspberry Pi and take your self-adhesive heatsink. It'll have this blue material on. Just peel that off and stick that onto the CPU nice and square like that. So I've done this one earlier. And I recommend that you point the fins up like that. So they're facing the direction of where the ports are. Okay. Once you've done that, get the top half of your case again and the Raspberry Pi and just carefully mate them together like that. So you're putting the pins into the holes on the PCB and it should go together nicely like that. And as you can see, there is a gap. There's plenty of clearance for the heat sink, so it's not touching the PCB. And all the corners are nice and flush against the standoffs. 
Once you've done that, turn it around like uh, like this, and you want to take this thermal pad and place it in the bottom left corner of the Raspberry Pi logo, a little bit like that. It doesn't have to be exact, just roughly in that location, because what you're doing is you are um, you're just putting it behind the CPU like this. And what that's going to do is it's going to try and transfer some heat from the back of this PCB into the aluminium faceplate so it can radiate out from the case. It just helps with cooling a little bit. So once that's on like that, you can then put that to one side, take the bottom half of the case. Now, when I ship these out, um, this bottom faceplate should be pre-installed inside the bottom half of the case. If it's not, or if it's come loose during shipping, just make sure that um, the logo is at the bottom, so it's facing the side of the case with no openings on it. And just place it in to the recess like that and push it into place. It might it might need a little bit of um, persuasion to get it popped in there because the tolerances can be very tight on these, but you want to end up with something that looks like that so it's nice and flat. If it's refusing to go in, you can take one of the standoffs, um, put one of the standoffs above one of the plastic supports there and put a screw in from the back and then gently tighten it up and it should hopefully pull that corner of the um, the panel into the case if, if, you, if you're having trouble pushing that in just with your fingers. So you can try that if need be, but they should be already installed for you. Once you've done that and you've made sure that the capped on tape is at this bottom edge and not against the top edge, because the whole point of this capped on tape is to insulate the pie from the thermal, um, from the, uh, the panel. Um, make sure that's oriented correctly. And once you've done that, you can take the two halves and you can put them together. And notice that these pins here that I have trimmed short are above the, um, the capped on tape. There's miles of clearance if you do trim them. If you don't trim them, there should still be clearance, but that's why the, the tape is there, just in case that they're too long and someone forgets to trim them. So yeah, it's, it's just, it's better and easier if you trim them. And yeah, you just put them together like that. And you should find that the case doesn't have any large gap between the two halves. It should all just go together nicely like that. Once you've made sure there's no gaps, then you can turn it over like that and take the short screws and just use your hex driver. So this is a um, this is a 1.5 millimeter hex driver, and you just want to gently tighten these up. You don't have to use loads of force. Just just make them snug. You don't have to murder them tight. <laughs> you don't want to damage anything. Again, if you're struggling to get the screws in through the case, um, you might want to take it apart and just make sure there's no 3D print material inside the holes. Again, I try and clear these out before shipping, but there is a small chance that there could be something blocking the hole. So if you're struggling, take it apart and check it. But that's it. It's now fully assembled. You're ready to go on with the SD card preparation. That's beyond the scope of this video. As with all software tutorials, it's very easy for software tutorials to go out of date when they're in video format and it's not possible to update videos once they're out. So it's best to go onto the GitHub um, readme file and the wiki and just follow the instructions there on how to prepare an SD card. I'll put the links in the description. Um, and once you've got your SD card prepared using your computer or your mister if you've used the uh, installation script, you just put it into your Raspberry Pi like that, and then you can power it up. So again, there are configuration options that need to be set to enable these buttons, the screen, the audio output, and the wheel. Um, that's detailed in the PDF manual, and it also should make sense if you follow the installation guide on GitHub. Your power supply input is this one here, and that's it booting up there. So. Let me just put that in its stand. That's what the stand looks like if you purchased the stand or printed the stand. And yeah, check that everything works. Check that the wheel controls the volume. Check that that 
button works there. Currently the button doesn't do anything in MT32 Pi, but in future this will be a menu system. Um, and you should be able to switch between all the various modes using the buttons. Then you can plug in your, um, whoops, you can plug in your audio output. Wee. <laughs> and your MIDI input. And hopefully you should be able to play on your keyboard. Or you can play a nice song uh, and and listen to some MIDI. So I hope you enjoy your MT32 Pi Zero and I hope that this video was helpful. If you have any problems and you need support, I encourage you to go onto my GitHub and open a discussion in the question and answer section and I'll try and help you there. Thanks very much for watching and enjoy your MT32 Pi.